job openings tumbling. We're going to talk about layoffs. There is so many uh, news articles about layoffs. I don't. I couldn't even hit them all in this. We're going to briefly go over some of them. We're going to talk about the unemployment rate and all of that. So let me get a little sip. Mm. And let's dive right in. Now, we've been warning about this because these are the great indicators, the signs of the times changing, right? The last two years, we have had problems getting uh, tons of employers like myself with the construction company have had hard times getting more and more qualified people, but not only qualified people, but just people to show up, people to show up and do a job, do what they're asked to do, not show up you know, under the influence of something. Honestly, it is insane what business owners have been trying to do. Uh, put down in the comments what kind of uh, issues you've had going out to a restaurant where literally one half of the uh, restaurant is full and it's not because there isn't a line out the door or you're unable to get a reservation. It's because they simply don't have enough wait staff, chefs, cooks, uh, dishwashers to be able to service that restaurant being full. So it is absolutely insane. And there are more and more businesses closing down by the day, which is going to add to the velocity of this collapse. As a matter of fact, before I dive into these uh, stories, and I thank you so much for hitting the thumbs up button, guys, to get this going. Um, how many of you have seen this lately? Because I am hearing this left and right. And even though I am no longer uh, owning a construction company, we shut that down because of what is coming. I'm preparing now. How many of you have uh, been trying to get something done on your home for literally the last year or two and always getting the same exact story from your contractor or anyone working on your house? Hey, I'm slammed, I'm slammed, these crazy prices. Only now to be getting phone calls left and right from people that are checking in to see if you still have a need for construction. The point being is right now, things are falling off of a cliff fast. People are not building and doing as many things as they once were. So construction is getting hit right now. As a matter of fact, um, there was a story, Chris, my buddy Chris Taylor from uh, Financial Prepper told me, and I'm totally blanking out on it. I wanted to share it because it was such a good story. But it was about that exact same thing, what we were talking about, the whole idea of, somebody calling you back when all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I, I thought you were, you were slammed, you were busy, but it's happening more and more often. And oh, it was had to do with one of his suppliers for his welding company. So people now need more work. And right now the proof is in the pudding. Check this out. Out of CNBC's breaking news, um, job openings tumbled uh, below 10 million in February for the first time in nearly two years. It says available positions totaled 9.93 million, a drop of 632,000, which is on a percentage basis a lot. From January's downwardly revised number, very important to remember that, downwardly revised number, according to the Labor Department's JOLTS report. Now, I've been telling you about uh, for years, watch the revised numbers, okay? Because they put out a narrative, they put out numbers, and then later on they go, oh yeah, we miscalculated those. And they're always to the downside. It's never a, oh, hey, it's better than we thought. It's better. It's never like that, okay? That's them trying to pump or juice the markets for as much momentum as it can get, all right? People need to understand that. Now, we, I'm going to show you unemployment numbers and where we are, because this is actually so staggering. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you right now. Check this out. I'm just going to show you my computer. This is high tech, right? Because the ninja doesn't edit. So you got this chart of unemployment. And you could see right here, that's that COVID spike on this side, that insane spike where just the nation was shut down and all of a sudden everybody was unemployed. And you go, yeah, but ninja, look right there. That looks like we're nothing. Okay, this is what I'll show you. This right here, this area right here will get out of the reflection. Right there was what happened. And let me get the date. That was in 2007 or 2006, sorry. Right as it troughed, it peaked, and then it started to cruise up, right? And that was when everything started to fall apart in the economy. That's when the housing started to come off of its highs. That's when you were seeing uh, the, the uh, stock market coming off its highs, and that's where we are right now. So if you sit there and think for one second that this is a good spot, we're actually right at the bottom, and everything's about to be exploding, and I'm going to show you through the news headlines. I'm going to show you all of the tens of thousands of jobs that are being lost right now every week, right now in the country. And now we're seeing the job openings lesson because it's, it's a two-part thing that the media doesn't really want you to know. And that is 
um, oh, you know, unemployment is good. We're, we're, you know, employment's good. We're at good employment numbers. But as jobs start to fall, that's also an indicator that companies not only, you know, because we have companies laying people off, but also they're like, you know what, there's just not enough job openings. We're figuring things out or consolidating or we're closing stores um, or, hey, you know what, that store is just not in business at all. We're done. So there's less job openings where last month there was a restaurant that needed a full wait staff, but this month it closed its doors. So those job openings are gone. All right. And they're not going to come back until another restaurant opens its doors, uh, opens up a store and starts over. But this is the beginning of the downward spiral. Okay. And that's what I like to do with this channel. And if you haven't done so, and you think this is good information, because I like to show people what's happening in real time. And then I could be able, I can actually project a little bit into the future because these cycles are totally predictable and normal because it all comes down to human emotion and behavior. And that's why, you know, I was an investor before the dot-com crash. And then I was an investor also before the real estate crash. And I actually pivoted on both those and made some money. Actually, really, it's not about making money. It's about saving money. So, okay. The job, Jobs report, or sorry, the JOLTS report, job openings tumbling. So we already talked about the drop of 632,000 jobs. It was the first time vacancies fell below 10 million since May of 2021. All right. So there's always been this job opening, a certain amount of job openings, but it, it hasn't been since May of 21 said it dropped below that key threshold number of 10 million jobs. Professional and businesses business services saw a slide of 278,000 job openings on the month to lead the decliners. So professional and business services. So you think about it, that's usually on the higher echelon of cost, right? And people right now are cutting the fat out of their budgets. So they are starting to spend less money um, in key demographics, key industries, and those industries are having to consolidate, having to lay people off, and in turn, hire less people, right? The other thing that people don't realize is as shifts happen, like one day I talked to my barber and he said, I'll be safe. I said, no, you won't. The reason why is because as more people get laid off, they're gonna become barbers. They're gonna become Uber drivers. I've heard that from Uber, oh, my job's safe. Yeah, your job's safe, the job, but not your job, the job. And the thing is, there's only so many people that will take a Uber, a Lyft, a taxi, right? And so what happens as real estate agents get laid off because they're not needed, mortgage brokers are getting laid off. And we're not, we're just talking about right now, cyclical events in an economy, economic uh, cyclical events, right? You need to also think about the impact that AI, artificial intelligence is having, right? So all of those jobs where you think you're safe, you better start thinking of something now to make extra money. And it's not just extra money for the long haul. Like that's what I teach in the, real, the side hustle course. It is so vital that you find jobs or side hustles that make lots of money right now. You pay off or pay down debt. You buy assets that are cash flowing because this isn't going to be a just... Uh, one job gets you through everything. It's about, you're about to see the hustler mentality take a whole new level. And that's what's exciting because during the Great Depression, there were more millionaires made during the Great Depression than ever before. Why? Because it caused people to be inventive and, uh, and start thinking outside of the box. Well, wouldn't it be nice if you started thinking outside of the box now before millions of other people start doing the same thing? Because you don't want that kind of competition. I'm just saying, all right? Um, uh, somebody says, uh, roofer, uh, AI won't be taking his job. You know, something that's really interesting that you need to understand right now is uh, artificial intelligence is not only taking jobs through directly where it, the, the artificial intelligence is doing things, but it's also coming up with new creative formulas on how to build materials and make them last longer. So let me give you an example. Use a roofer as an example. So I've been in the construction industry for, I don't know, 20 something years. Uh, in and out, either handyman or owning a construction business or flipping homes, right? What if there was a material that was made that made roofing so amazing that you didn't have to replace it for 100 years? And what if the government figured out a way of giving some kind of cash incentive for you to be able to do that and uh, do it really cheap, right? Like a solar panels. And let's just say it's probably going to end up soaking up energy, right? So a bunch of people go out there and get it. Well, right now, there's only X amount of homes in the country, X, and all those homes need a roof, right? Some of them need roofs faster than others because they're either composition roofs, things like that, or, you know, um, flat roofs with, uh, you know, tar and gravel kinds of things, or they have longer roofs like concrete or tile or possibly metal, right? 
what if there's all of a sudden, if there was an incentive for everybody to run out and at one time go and just put all these roofs on? Well, you're going to be super stoked as a roofer because you're going to have all this work until you don't. Why? Because nobody needs a roof anymore. As a matter of fact, the government just came out and says, hey, you know what? These things are so slick. We're mandating that all roofs are made with this one thing. And guess what? You have to thank artificial intelligence because it figured out through using its learning that this chemical works better with this chemical. And you guys have been doing it wrong this whole time. And if you'll simply make a roof out of this, you never have to replace it. I know it sounds crazy, but you need to start thinking like that because some people are getting very, very lackadaisical or they just are already, all right? So jobs are gonna be in very short supply here going into this next year. So it says uh, right here, uh, the Fed has targeted the red hot labor market in its quest to bring down inflation, which has been running at a 41 year high in the summer of 2022. Uh, the central bank has raised benchmark interest rates nine times since March 22, but those moves have been appearing to have little impact on the job situation. See, the thing is, is that they have, um, oh wow, check this out. Let me stop it right there. Um, this, they have a situation where they're doing something, they're raising rates, raising rates, raising rates, and it has no, no effect until all of a sudden it has the effect all at once. And that's what you're gonna see right here. Um, ZX Hondo actually threw out a super chat and check this out. Heads up, Ninja. Literally just got off the phone with General Dynamics. 1,200 people laid off today. This is very, thank you for, for putting that in there. This is very, very serious. And people need to understand how big of a deal this is. So, okay, we're talking about job openings. Now, let's go over here. I've shown you the unemployment rate chart. And again, there's so many people that think everything's good because what the government does, they go, these are the numbers. We have historically low unemployment. Look at that. Look at that. And if you look at that number as compared, if you drew a line across that entire thing, that would show you you are at historic lows, but you're not. Guess what? Guess the last time this was at? This was at 1970, right there. 1970 is when everything started to come apart and... As the unemployment ticked up through the mid-70s into late 70s, inflation exploded. We had a lot of problems, all right? So it can turn on a dime. Unworthy servant, just, you know, let's change that to worthy servant. I, I love that name much better because it gives you clarity and peace and vision. And thank you so much for the, uh, the super chat. All right, so check this out. Um, so I've shown you the chart. Now let's dive into headlines because this is getting serious. And I told you guys to mark my words, by the fall, you're going to see 10,000 jobs a day gone. And there'll be a point in time where we'll be able to go back and say, oh, look, this is what the ninja said and here it happened. All right. Google, workers in London stage walkout over job cuts. That's not going to get them very far. Think about it. We're going to, we're employees and we're going to walk out and we're going to strike because you're laying people off and they're like, and you're next. Think about that. That's how stupid th people are. Okay. They can't think of it. They're just like, oh, big, big bad Google's laying us off. No, big bad Google is trying to actually stay in business. All right. That's how big of a deal it is. Google took a massive cut in ad revenue back in last June. That is when uh, spending contracted the most in one month that I've seen ever. And it was hard. It was sharp. Uh, Wall Street was panicking, advertisers, because I'm in the business, right? I'm in advertising. So I get to see this and I get to hear the panic and the rumors and then the rumors become reality in the headlines. And that is when uh, prices started to really drop really fast. Um, you know what's funny? Uh, unworthy Servant asked, hey, what kind of business would you recommend starting? So first off, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice before I dive into more of these headlines. Some of the advice I would give, I was going to do a video pretty shortly on... Um, because I keep adding videos to my side, side hustle course. And one of them is like literally, first off, going into business for yourself. And one of the business I saw are delivering medical supplies. You can make like 2,500 bucks a week doing this. But the big benefit is, is if you're making some money on the side delivering something, you now have your own business. If you put it in the proper entity, not only do you have income coming in, but you have a, a, re, a way to legally write off uh, some of everyday expenses that you'd normally use anyway, which saves you money. And remember, a penny saved or a dollar saved is a dollar earned, right? So I was seeing that delivery services and things like that. That would be something where, you know, is AI going to take it over? Eventually, yes, because you're going to have autonomous vehicles and all that kind of stuff. I mean, shoot, we're at like the other day, uh, my friend works at Chili's and she was saying, hey, 
Chili's already has a robot. It literally takes the dishes, the, the server just throws the dishes on it and boom, and it goes back like R2-D2 and goes and brings it back to the kitchen. I mean, the truth is robotics are taking jobs rapidly. And I think people need to get into the thought of, oh, I need to think of a new career to go into or a new side hustle to, to make me a little bit of money. No, you need as much money as you can now. This is not the time to be blowing money. You need to pay off debt now. And then you need to buy assets that are cash flowing. All right. Okay. So check this out. Uh, GM salaried workers take buyouts. Remember I did a video about that a couple of weeks ago. And I said, that's the illness, the sickness of the, uh, the auto industry right now. And GM's trying to save itself. So what's one thing you can do? Low hanging fruit from a C-suite executive level is we can get out from underneath some of these insane pension plans. I just heard of a pension plan in Dow in Texas, where the public servants are making literally like 85% of their pay after just 10 years. They only have to work 10 years and boom, they're out. Or maybe it was even more than that, but it was insane. And you think about it, you're like, shoot, someone could do that, walk away from that job, get 85% of their pay right away, and then immediately dive into another job and like double dipping, right? Do that for 10 years and they could do it again. It just blows my mind, right? These pension funds are underfunded and are bankrupt. That's another shock that's coming to the system later this year. But as far as GM, check this out. About 5,000 GM salaried workers take buyouts, avoiding layoffs. Again, this was something that they use fear, but it's not fear tactics. It is in the negotiation and first, but it is reality. If GM doesn't get these buyouts, people are going to be laid off. And there were some smart people who said, I'm out. I'm taking the buyout, right? If I had the ability right now to take a buyout, I would go right now in a heartbeat, right? But I have other things I have to do. I'm still taking care of a family. Um, now, check this out. Walmart lays off hundreds of warehouse workers in four states, including Texas. This is just an hour ago. This is real-time real news. Hey, guys, now just throwing this out there. Out of the 13, almost 1,400 people that are on right now, 335 hit the thumbs up. If you could do me a favor and hit the thumbs up, we're trying to warn as many people as possible to get the word out. People need to start diversifying their incomes because you may think that you're getting ahead right now and you're saving and you're going to get ready for this apocalypse. But I'm going to tell you right now, you don't want to be in a world where you're the only one that's ready. Trust me, that's not the world we want to be in. And we want prosperity. And to be able to warn people, if you're out there trying to warn your family and friends, let me know in the comment section how that's going. It's probably not going very well. Trust me. Even the ninjas, family and friends don't like to, to listen to them. Um, but, you know, so what do you do? You warn the world. And if you don't want to be the one with the megaphone, then at least hit the thumbs up button for the people that are. Uh, Walmart sees over 2,000 job cuts in e-commerce warehouse layoffs. Now, warehouses are interesting. Why? Because that's the artery. That's the, the main vein for, the, the, for Walmart's uh, shipping and, and supplies industry, it's how it gets the goods to the stores. Well, what happens when there's just not a lot of goods coming into the uh, warehouse to be able to ship off? Well, you don't need that many people. That's a key indicator of what's going to happen here pretty shortly in Walmart's earnings calls. But also, you have to sit there and think how sad this is that Walmart's stock or any of these companies' stocks spike whenever they get information out to the street that they're laying people off. Why? Because all the investors think about is, oh man, that means you're spending less, so profits are gonna go up. And those idiots, and I mean idiots, we're talking about some investors out there that are pretty dumb. They don't see the writing on the wall and they go, and I'll, let me explain this to the person that thinks this is good. When a company lays off and you like, woo, I'm score, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna run this thing to the moon. It's not even a dividend play. I don't, I don't know if Walmart's a dividend play or not. I'm pretty sure the stock is and the common shares aren't. But what are you going to get? It's all speculation. This is all games. And then it only leads to a few months later, oh yeah, we laid those people off because we're not selling anything. So profits dropped and thank you, now your stock dropped. Thank you, come again. Think about this. I mean, how foolish can people be? But most people don't see the signs of the time. They're just seeing it for a quick buck. They're not looking at the big devastation that's on its way. Um, all right, so here we go. Uh, are layoffs coming? Now, check this out. This is out of two hours ago. We got to click this because it's on CNN, so you know it's true, right? Sense of sarcasm. Opinion. This is the opinion. Layoffs are coming, but not in every industry. All right, this is hard because I got to go to sarcasm mode so the voice changes. As recession worries grow, it begs the question, which sectors, if you think that uh, CNN is a pile of crap, hit the thumbs up button for me. And if you don't think it's a pile of crap, you probably should just not watch this channel. Um, as recession worries grow, it begs the question, which sectors are most likely to start shedding jobs? We at the conference board decided to construct an index to help answer that question. Thank you, CNN. This is going to be good, I bet. 
The industries that are most at risk are information, transportation, and warehousing, construction, followed by repair and personal services, manufacturing, real estate, and wholesale trade. Isn't it cool? This is on CNN right now. Look at look what's being advertised. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, I know. I know. They've got a bunch of uh, indictments coming. They ain't going to stick. Get ready. Um, okay, so there's all these issues, and they're right. Transportation, warehousing, construction, followed by repair and personal services, manufacturing, real estate, and wholesale trade. Here's the problem. You have to understand how big that industry is. So as they start to lay off, what it does is it hits all other sectors. Check this out. Over the past two years, uh, employers have had difficulty time retaining employees. We don't need to read about that, right? Check this out. Three sectors that face the highest risk of, of job layoffs. It's information services. All right. Why would that be? AI. Transportation and warehousing and construction. Okay. And then we go into the finance and insurance services and things like that. Check this out. Think about this. These are the industries that they talk about. And I, this is insane. That are the golden ones. Healthcare and social assistance. All right. First off, I want you to understand that healthcare and social assistance are funded by the government. Give me a quick sec. I'll explain why. The federal government is the number one. Just so you know, the federal government goes through layoffs, furloughs, and they uh, freeze uh, pay. As a matter of fact, the U.S. government went through a pay freeze after the Great Recession that was 10 years long. For 10 years, the largest employer on earth froze its employees' pay. All right? And if you don't think for a second that the government can shrink its employees, you have another thing coming. When uh, you have a big recession or what is coming right now is a depression, all bets are off. And then here's the other number one thing that blows me away. Private educational services. When people don't have money because there's a depression, they will not pay for private educational services. And on the slight coincidence or ability that you're able to be a you know be a private educational server, you're able to go out and teach. Well, guess what? You're about to have a whole lot of competition because there's a lot of other bright people out there that'll move into that. And that is yet one other way going back to that super chat question is another idea for a side hustle. If you're a teacher right now, what if you started teaching uh, others for money on the side, people of, of stature, people of money that, that have more means than others, right? You could start that business right now and it, the startup costs are nothing because it's all in your brain. All right, now it's very hard with that being said to scale unless you go hire people, but you get my point, right? All right, so the headlines right now are showing these mass layoffs that are happening. If there's any way, guys, that we could get up to a thousand thumbs up, I would be so grateful. Let's talk about this. McDonald's temporarily closes U.S. office ahead of planned layoffs. Think about that. They don't want the McDonald's executives um, you know, throwing cheeseburgers at them, I think, in real time. So why not put everybody at home Put everybody to, to uh, work at home, and then all they got to do, it's just like what Marty McFly or his dad gets the, uh, the letter in the fax that you're fired, and it comes right through there as what's his name's on the TV screen, what, Back to the Future too? you guys remember that? It's so easy to fire someone while they're at remote working. It's just so much easier. I mean, if you think about it, it's very not awkward. And you can just do it over Zoom. Shoot, we've seen that in the last year and a half. Somebody, some schmo that, you know, runs a massive company that was going public and he's, you know, probably a billionaire himself. He just simply fired like a thousand people or 10,000 people right off of Zoom. Yeah, you know how easy that is? Hey, everybody, I was wondering if you wondered, yeah, you're fired. Okay, see you guys later. And then just hangs the phone up. And then when the backlash happened, because people like me railed against him online, how insensitive and what an idiot the guy is, then his job is at risk. The board figures out and goes, yeah, maybe we need someone that thinks a little bit better. But that's what's happening right now. McDonald's is laying people off. Why? Because the franchisees that pay, I think, like $150,000 a year, is it a year to the store, to the McDonald's are railing because they're losing so much money because McDonald's has so much of a tie on these private uh, financees or I'm mean, at franchisees. Uh, and if you think, yeah, they're making a lot of money, but they could be making more. And so they're railing against them. So McDonald's going to be taking hits. And so it's got to lay people off. That's super, super easy. Um, check this out one hour ago. And this is insane because, okay, I've told you guys this. I've said it before that you're going to see, was it UBS that purchased uh, Credit Suisse? And there was a emergency uh, loan 
to backstop all of that. All right. Layoffs 2023, UBS among latest to job cut jobs. This is really happening in real time. This is one hour ago. Um, I'm going to click on it, read a little bit of it. Massive cuts, massive cuts. This is just today. Like we are getting bombarded right now with insane uh, job losses. It says employers around the world are slashing jobs across different sectors, including finance and healthcare, according to job data. This is really, really happening right now. So UBS just put on the list right now that they're going to be laying people off. Um, after meta mass layoffs and official pause on remote work hiring. So right now you've got meta, not only we already know about the mass layoffs. Now they're putting a pause or putting a hiring freeze on remote work hiring. So that's one and yet another way, because you've seen Elon Musk come out and say, you guys need to come to work now, come back to work, none of this remote working crap. And so what's another way to force that? Well, we're going to stop hiring people for remote work. If you want to get hired with our company, you need to get your butt in the seat in the building that we're already paying the air conditioning and electricity for. Think about that. So companies are drastically changing. And this is going to happen, literally, it'll seem like overnight. Over the next eight weeks, you're going to see so many more layoffs coming. Check this out. Eight hours ago, Disney EMEA staff bracing for layoffs and content cuts. Why? Remember when I said a year and a half ago, that the first thing that's going to be cut is subscription services. And people are doing that. They're cutting the, the low-hanging fruit. They're trying to uh, put together any kind of budget they can just to make ends meet. Now, Disney is woke as crap. So you go woke, you go broke. I don't feel bad for you. But and, and by the way, you seen that Bud Light stuff that they're pushing right now with uh, the, the what was it? I don't even remember. It was a guy that became a girl or girl became a guy. And so they're celebrating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, NASCAR and, and all, all you fans out there that are drinking Bud Light. And, and trust me, I, I, I've worked in the construction trade. It's like, that's like the official beer of, of construction. Yeah, stop drinking that stuff. They're going woke. They need to go broke. And maybe it'll, uh, maybe it'll make uh, another great beer company come out and do something good. Anyway, that stuff's crap. Um, Apple, five hours ago, five hours ago, to slash some corporate retail jobs in rare layoff. Think about rare? No, not if you're watching the Economic Ninja. And it's not about tooting horn. I build a basis of understanding and knowledge of what I've been warning people about because what's coming in the fall is going to scare the piss out of people. And I would rather have everybody ready for this, have you have cash on the side, savings account, have multiple bank accounts so you're not getting in trouble when one bank shuts down and your other one's open, things like that. I want you ready. I want you paying off debt, getting ready for this because this is going to be insane. So Apple to slash some corporate retail jobs. Why would you need to do that? It's because you're not selling your crappy phones. All right, just letting you know. Twitter, hey, let me know down in the comment section. I was curious, are you an Android or an Apple person? I'm just super curious. How many people just type Android? Ooh, hey, do me a favor. Hashtag Android, hashtag Apple. Let's see if Apple all of a sudden goes, who's the ninja? Um, Twitter, let's see, uh, McDonald's, we already talked about that. Mary's Center faces unprecedented layoffs, cutting 6% of its staff. Check this out. This is very important because remember what CNN just talked about with healthcare as being like the the top number one like safe uh, bet. Check this out. Mary Center laid off now. This is small, but it always starts small and it goes big. Forty eight employees or six percent of its total staff in recent weeks. An unprecedented move in the prominent DC community health centers thirty three year history. All right, so it's unprecedented. It's been around for a long time and it is in DC, so it is pretty uh, in a crazy area, right? CEO Tolly Bill Elliott Sr. says they decided to reduce staff to operate more efficiently. That's what happens when you're probably a nonprofit and all of a sudden you're getting your stuff cut. Uh, adding to the center foresaw financial challenges with pandemic era relief ending and supply cuts continue or supply costs continue to rise. So it's weird. So you get off the government dole and all of a sudden we need, we need more money. So what do you do? We lay people off. Isn't that interesting? So where CNN is saying, hey, this is the number one safe place to be. And then there's other people going, yeah, we have to cut because our whole infrastructure is built on taking people's money. That's all it is. Uh, we're taking government money. We're taking tax favor money. We're taking you know, donations, doing whatever. Oh, they're not showing up. You see what happens when the government dole is gone? You see when 
I'm telling you, this is going to end very badly for so many people. If you don't have a side hustle, you don't aren't getting debt paid off right now, and you're not looking to get big money. Stop worrying about literally, I don't want to work a day over, you know, five days or four days. I am a 40 hour. I don't want to work more than 40 hours. You people at work are just my work to life balance ratio is more important. You're going to go broke and I don't feel bad for you. I don't feel bad for you. It's time to work hard. I didn't get where I was financially by sitting around going, oh, what's my work-life uh, balance looking like? Is that what's going to feed my family? Is that what's going to pay for my kid's college? Is that what's going to buy me my house so I can own it cash? Is that going to buy me my rentals? No, no work-to-life balance. Sorry. What happens is when you get rich, then you can take your time. It's just how it works. That's just how people get successful. But hey, who am I? I'm just a ninja. Walmart, we're going back to that Walmart. That's making a lot of news headlines right now. 2,000 uh, warehouse workers. Think about that. Uh, look, I don't want to lay this too long. It's very serious where we're at right now. Uh, the layoffs are going to get intense. I'm calling for 10,000 layoffs a day by the fall. and Or in the fall, actually, in the fall. So hashtag it, you know, record this. People can sit there and go, Ninja, you're wrong. I've been wrong before. I don't think I'm going to be wrong this time. But we'll see. Guys, I hope you guys got something out of this. I'll put a link to the uh, Side Hustle course, the discount code. Don't pay full price for it. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. The Economic Ninja is out.